It is also, by the way, a tribute to uh, the head of uh, uh, scouting who just told me that he could help me pick uh, my Supreme Court justice. <laughs> um, where is it? Mark. Mark. Yeah. Right. So, he volunteered. He said, I know what I'm doing. President Obama earlier today with the Chicago Blackhawks as he hosted last year's hockey champs at the White House today. In the meantime, the Republican candidates for the president's job speaking out about the looming showdown between the White House and the Senate on a nominee to fill the seat of late Justice Scalia. So you won't oh, nominate absolutely. somebody to the Supreme Court unless they agree with Scalia on the Heller decision, Correct. that the Second Amendment means Americans Correct. have the right to keep in their I give arms. that commitment right now, absolutely. We have an election coming up in November. I think 2016 should be a referendum on the Supreme Court. And you know, it was striking, the last Republican debate occurred the same day that we learned Justice Scalia passed. And I think that shifted, it really made people focus on the gravity of the stakes here. We are one liberal justice away from the Supreme Court ordering Ten Commandments monuments to be torn down, ordering veterans' memorials to be torn down, and undermining our fundamental religious liberty. There's also nothing in the Constitution that says the Senate must immediately confirm them. Right. So the bottom line is that um, I, there will be someone filling that vacancy, and I think the new president should be the person who fills that vacancy. And look, it may not be a Republican. I think it's going to be a Republican. That's what I want it to be. Well, other conservatives weighing in, suggesting the election might be at stake if Republican leadership buckles on this issue. Radio talk show host Hugh Hewitt writing in the Washington, Washington Examiner today saying, quote, every month, day, hour, minute, and tweet that the GOP spends defending the Constitution from another living Constitution, liberal justice, selected by President Obama, the better the odds of GOP victory in the fall. Folding on this central issue would kill GOP turnout. Fighting will energize the GOP base and even more importantly, center the election election on the biggest issues outside of war and peace that drive the country's political debates. Leslie Marshall is a radio talk show host and Fox News contributor. Ian Pryor is communications director for American Crossroads, a Republican super PAC. It's great to have you both. Ian, those are high stakes. Do you see it in the same way? Well, you know, I think there are two issues here. First is the process issue. Is, you know, appointing a Supreme Court justice now and going through the nomination hearings, is that going to be an election issue? You see polls that show 81% of Republicans don't want the nomination to go forward. 81% of Democrats want the nomination to go forward and independents are split. So I think on the process issue, it's really a wash. I think the big issue is going to be what do Americans want for the future of this Supreme Court? Do they want a liberal leaning Supreme Court which breaks with the status quo where it is now? Or do they want to continue to have a center right Supreme Court that bases its decisions in the Constitution, not on political grounds. And Leslie, that's why Hugh Hewitt says this is the issue that the Republicans have to double down, triple down on, because it will help them in this election cycle. What do you think? Well, I think what we're seeing in the past couple of days, after other polls, like 53% of people who say across the board, uh, according to Rasmussen, that they do not want uh, the GOP to block, first of all. Second of all, that they do believe it is the president's obligation constitutionally to nominate someone. And the Senate doesn't have to approve that nomination, obviously. But we have people like Grassley. We have people like Tillis and other Republicans who are backing down from that vow to block any nominee the president puts forth. And I think that's because they have seen uh, the ramifications and how this could hurt the GOP. I had, a I had a Republican yesterday say that this is part of our government, one of our branches of government. This could be tantamount and be perceived as a government shutdown uh, by the so, GOP once So then again. the GOP falls into a familiar stereotype, Ian, of looking like obstructionists, of not looking like they're working towards a common goal. Is there a risk for the GOP to go too hard on this issue? Well, you know, I'd go back to 1968. Richard Nixon ran against a liberal Supreme Court. Abe Fortas and uh, Thornberry, who was the other Supreme Court justice, their nominations were blocked. Richard Nixon won the election because he ran against a liberal Supreme Court. I think we can run against the possibility of a liberal Supreme Court that would be nothing more than a formality for a potential Democratic president to rubber stamp executive orders, as we've seen from this president, who uses executive orders to get around Congress. Is that something that America wants? Okay, so Ian's bringing us back to 1968. I just want to bring us back to yesterday. <laughs>
both just a little <laughs> bit to show, which is a good point, Ian, a fair point and a good one. Um, yesterday, Josh Ernest was talking about the president because the president, as a senator, of course, supported the filibuster to stop uh, Justice Alito from uh, being confirmed. Of course, we know Justice Alito is now sit sitting on the Supreme Court. But just listen to Josh Ernest try to explain the president's position today versus his position <clears throat> in 2006. He regrets the vote that he made because, frankly, I mean, as we've discussed, Democrats should have been in a position where they were making a public case. That's what Democrats should have done. And they shouldn't have uh, looked for a way to just throw sand in the gears uh, of the process. Uh, and frankly, looking back on it, the president believes that he should have just followed his own advice. Same question could be asked as well for Democrats, Leslie. What's the risk to them about the nomination? Who is nominated and how hard Democrats want to fight for that nomination as well? Well, actually, this is like a chess game, so to speak, and President Obama has the next move. He could obviously nominate someone who is quite moderate, and that would put the Republicans in a precarious position. He could also nominate somebody that the uh, liberals know that they would love and that Republicans definitely uh, wouldn't go forward with. But this is his next move. Democrats might actually more so than Republicans come out en masse based on not just who the president nominates, but the reaction and the action or lack of action by the GOP after a nominee is named. And the president's very clear that he is going to be naming somebody. He is going to be nominated. And somebody. that name will tell us a lot, whoever he decides to nominate in the future. We hope we have you both back to talk about that when we do have that name. Ian, Leslie, great to have you both. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jenna.